Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to turn the network settings for your Arduino Uno with Wi Fi into values for variables. So, many times when you're using the Arduino Uno with Wi Fi for one of your Arduino projects, you're simply having it connect to the wireless network, and through DHCP, it'll grab an IP address, a subnet mask, and a default gateway. You may run into problems, though, if you do not know what those configurations are, and so that's why today I'm going to show you how to be able to pull that information out and basically assign those values to variables and then once those uh, variables have been created and the values have been assigned then you can do things like test against that those values so in today's class I'm going to be showing you how to pull out the IP address the default gateway the subnet mask and even the MAC address and then we are simply going to use a serial monitor to print this information out on the screen so for today's project, there's no real build for the project. I'm simply going to connect this into my demonstration computer. Uh, on that computer, I have added the Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi version 2 board using the board manager. And with the library manager, I have added the Wi-Fi 9 library that's required in order to actually be able to use the Wi-Fi component on your Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. So with that, let's go over to the demonstration system and I will show you how this sketch works. So here's the sketch that we're dealing with today. As you can see, it's relatively simple, not a lot to it. Uh, the main things that you're gonna have to remember in order to be able to start using your Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi is do make sure you go to Manage Libraries and install the Wi-Fi 9 library, and you go down to Boards, and you go to Board Manager, and you install the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi Rev2 board. That's that you will need to do those things in order to make this work with the IDE. Uh, past that, we're then going to include the, these two libraries, SPI and Wi-Fi 9 to allow the uh, Wi-Fi communication to happen. Then past that, we're going to create the variables for the SSID and the password. The SSID I'm connecting to today is simply test uh, space two, and the password is nothing. Uh, then we're going to create a status variable. This will simply be uh, WL underscore idle underscore status. Basically, this is something to test against while the, uh, the Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi is trying to connect to the wireless network. If it's connected, then it's connected. If not, not, but it actually needs a variable to be able to test against. Then we're going to come down to the void setup. In the void setup, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to begin the serial monitor, and we will be getting, beginning the serial monitor at 9600. Past that, we are doing our standard while loop uh, to try to connect to the Wi-Fi network. So basically, while status uh, does not equal WL connected, it's going to loop through. Uh, we're going to pass it the SSID, and we're going to pass it the password and try to connect to the wireless network. From there, this is where we actually uh, create all of our variables and then we assign the values for the variables so the first thing that we're going to have is a string for the SSID and we're going to make the SSID variable then equal Wi-Fi period SSID function so this pulls the SSID from the Wi-Fi uh, and that's now assigning that value to the variable SSID then we're going to come down and for the IP addresses for the IP address the subnet uh, and the gateway we are going to use the variable type of IP address so so for data types, you can have ints, you can have floats, you can have longs, you can have strings. When you're dealing with IP addresses, they actually have a data type for IP address. So we're simply going to say IP address, and the IP is going to equal Wi-Fi.localIP function. Then we're going to do IP address subnet is going to equal Wi-Fi.subnet mask function. And then IP address gateway is going to equal Wi-Fi.gatewayIP function. So that is how you can pull this information out. To be clear, you do not have to create variables and assign the values to the variables you can actually test directly against uh, these functions uh, but I'm just doing this to show you that you can pull these values out assign them to variables and then do things based off of that the next thing that we're then going to get to is the MAC address uh, you can see up here all of this is really 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 simple not too much coding to get done uh, with the MAC address it gets a little bit more complicated so we're gonna have a byte data type here we're, we're gonna, then going to call it a MAC and basically this is is going to be an array with six keys so that's going to be an important thing to realize with your MAC address is it's actually a, a an array uh, an array can store multiple uh, variable values in it 
And so one of the issues that we're going to deal with is once we have an array, we then have to turn that back into a string, back into one single uh, value that we can deal with. Then uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to call this function wifi.mac address. So it's going to grab the wifi.mac address and it's going to assign it to that array that we just created called Mac. Now that we have that, we then have to turn this Mac array into something that we can actually read out. So then what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called Mac address. It's going to have a data type of string. And basically we're going to parse through the array, grab out all the bits out of the array and create a string. So here what we're going to do is we use a string function. So what the string function does is it turns a numeric value into a string data type. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do string, then Mac, at the sixth position, so it starts at zero, it starts at zero and goes to five. So this is the sixth position and then hex. So you can say what kind of numbering scheme you're using. So the Mac address is a hexadecimal numbering scheme. So basically we're going to turn the fifth position of the Mac address that is a hex value into a string. Then we're going to concatenate on a plus and then we're going to add a colon. And then we're going to go to the fifth position of the MAC address, and we're going to add that on uh, plus a colon. Then we're going to go to the fourth position of the MAC address, that's a hex. And we're going to add that on plus a colon. The third position, which is a hex, we're going to add that on. The second, so on and so forth. And so basically we're going through here and we're going to each key in the array, grabbing out that value as a hex. We are then turning that into a string. We are then adding a colon to the end of it. Then we're adding the next value, the next value, the next value, all the way to you get down to the first value, which is actually Mac zero. And that is where you end. So now the Mac address will be a nice long Mac address that you're used to. Then all we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're simply going to print out the information. The big thing that I want you to understand though, is that we now have those values set for these variables. And so right now we're simply printing out the values, but once you have a value for a variable, you can then test against it. You know, if the value is whatever, do something, right? So that's the kind of interesting thing here. We're just printing out again, the SSID, the IP, the subnet, the gateway, and the MAC address. And you'll notice this is actually all being done in the setup and is not being done in the loop itself. So this can be a useful kind of like a self-test procedure for your device. If you put all of this information or if you put all this code code into the setup uh, routine, basically it'll print out only once and basically it'll only fire off only once and then it will go to the loop later. So again, one of those things to think about. So past that, what I can do is I can simply hit the upload button. And so now the sketch is uploading, uploading, uploading. So I can then go to tools. I can go to serial monitor. And when it's finished uploading, we'll see what the results are. So we can see attempting to connect to network name test two. So it's going through, it is trying to connect to this network. And in, I don't know, approximately 10 seconds, it should be connected to the network and then it will spit out all the information. So there we go. We got the SSID. We are now connected to test two. We have the IP address we're connected to. We have the subnet mask we're connected to. We have the gate way we're connected to and we have the MAC address uh, of this particular uh, network interface card that we're using. So therefore we have all of this information. Again, we can either use this to test against the variable values or we can simply use it as a troubleshooting routine, make sure that we're getting an appropriate IP address, make sure the gateway is correct, all of that different type of stuff. So that's basically just how this little project today works. Um, again, you're going to be using this type of thing a lot in the future. And I figured I just wanted to do a video where I put it all together for you. So there you go. Now you know how to pull out the network configuration settings for your Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi and then turn those settings into values for variables. Once you have those values for variables, you can do something as simple as simply doing a serial monitor, monitor print out uh, to display what that information is. Or like I say, you can do things like test against that information. One of the things that I find very useful is being able to pull out the MAC address for your Arduino Unos with Wi-Fi can be very, very useful when you're sending information information to servers. Uh, so in different classes I have where the Arduino Unos with Wi-Fi are sending values to servers. And one of the problems you can run into is that if you have multiple devices all sending information to a server, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is how do you differentiate uh, those values once they get to the server, right? Basically, how do you say that these values in the database uh, relate to this particular Arduino and these other values over here, they, they correspond to a different Arduino? 
Arduino. One of the ways that you can differentiate the, the, the records is simply by using the MAC address. So basically when I upload values from my sensors, you know, whether I have a temperature sensor or a water sensor or anything else, one of the things I also upload and, and insert into the database is what the MAC address is. So I can say, okay, all of these records are associated with this MAC address. All of these records are associated with that MAC address. And so the MAC address can be very useful when you're using your Arduino Unos with Wi-Fi on the network to differentiate basically which Arduino is which. Uh, that is going to be a big problem when you're dealing with multiple Arduino Uno Wi-Fi's on a network is again, differentiating which of them is which and making sure you understand which records correspond with which devices. So being able to pull out that MAC address, you now have it as a string. Once it's a value in a string, you can do a lot of different things with it. So that's an important thing to think about. Uh, the only final thing that I would warn you about is for the DNS, for whatever reason, you can't easily pull out the DNS using the Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. So you can pull out the subnet mask and the default gateway and all that kind of thing. The DNS, you cannot easily pull out. If you really want to know what the DNS is, basically for your Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi, you have to manually configure it. So in a different class, I'll show you how to manually configure uh, your network settings for your Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. And so basically what you would do is you would manually configure what the MAC address is, and then you would just call basically the configuration that you put in. Uh, so that's what you would do if you are dynamically, you're using DHCP to get the information, uh, basically that network information for your Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. Uh, you are not probably going to be able to get the DNS IP address. Uh, that may come into some problems. Again, if you're building uh, some kind of infrastructure and you're having issues with resolving domain names, you might have a problem there. If that's the case, then what you would do is you would manually configure the DNS in your Arduino sketch, uh, and then you can verify that the DNS is proper so that's just one of those weird again when you're dealing with the arduino world there's just weird it's some things work very easily some things are like wow that's simple and then other things they just don't do <laughs> they just don't do eh, what do you gotta do so anyways as always i enjoy doing this class i look forward to seeing you at the next one if you like the content that i create please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall that includes the videos that includes the notes the diagrams and the code example all of that is freely available and in front of the paywall but if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment you do need to become a member membership is five dollars a month or sixty dollars a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.